Hello. Uh, what's popping, Trey? Oh, man, this has been a long time coming. I'm so glad we were able to make it work. I know, huh? No, for real. <laughs> I, like, uh, you know how much of a fan I am of yours. And you and your music, you are always so intentional with the messaging. Mm. Tonight, you're going to be showing up and showing out. I want to hear some of those beginnings because, you know, you've been writing, you've been curating your sound, your mm. music, your brand for mm. years. Tell us about those beginnings before you said, I'm really going to do this for real. Yeah, for sure. Well, the beginning, for real, for real, goes back to, I remember I was writing songs back in like elementary school. I would bring them to my sister and I would sing them and uh, I would ask her to help me write them. But then uh, probably around middle school, if you remember MySpace, I used to rap battle people on MySpace. I would just write all my bars on there, uh, uh, going back and forth with strangers. And then um, just around that time, I really started to write in my notebooks. I kept it as for me, though. It was more something that was therapeutic. As I got into high school, probably around 15, 16, um, we started an open mic called Empire Nights. Um, and that was a space where I was emceeing. I was kind of introducing people like, oh, uh, and kind of getting my comfort on stage. That's when I started to show what I was writing. And since then, it's been a wrap because I've just been able to find my own sound, my own style. Um, so it started out with just writing, and then getting comfortable with my own thoughts, my own ideas, my creativity. Um, and then by the time I was about 17, 18, I had some access to some recording uh, technology. And uh, it's been a wrap since then. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you, uh, so many people know you here, but you've been like taking, you know, the whole country, the world by storm. The great thing about, well, I mean, the, well the great <laughs> thing about yeah. digitization means that mm -hmm. people all over can consume your music, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you've been doing some major shows here, man. I mm -hmm. mean, I've been seeing you like knocking it out one after another after another. Tell us about the, just kind of that music family yeah. that resides here uh, in the Pacific Northwest that you're now so plugged into. Yeah, and that's why too because for a little bit I, I wouldn't say I was boxed out but because of the way I am and the style I am when you when you're somebody that works with young people you come from the community you don't really get to tap into mainstream spaces so that's actually a new thing in Seattle over the last like five to seven years um, and shout out to some of the the OGs of the town that are also really community rooted but going crazy with the music so for me it really is all about being unapologetic with what I do, trying to create space for other people, um, and kicking doors down. If you give me your mic and I got an opportunity to rap, mm-hmm, I'm finna bring it. And that's just my, been my mentality um, ever since I started performing. So I have had the opportunity to perform on a couple of stages. Um, I've been able to travel a little bit, and I'm just trying to multiply it, because uh, when I get mine, you gonna get yours. Yeah. You gonna get yours. Somebody else gonna get it, too, because that's just how I move. Well, that's definitely how you roll. And I'm so uh, grateful to know you like outside of music because I get to experience your impact in community. Mm -hmm. And Juneteenth is one of those events, uh, particularly the ones that have been held at Jimi Hendrix have always embedded these important messages uh, throughout everything. So, yo, you got it out. You got it out here now. Yes, absolutely. Jimmy. Important messages, right? And you you also are very specific about the important messages you put in your music. Tell us about that creative process because you're really able to blend your community experience and the rootedness you have there with the artistry. Tell us more about that. Word. See, that's probably more of the, uh, that's, the that's the more detailed la layer that people usually don't get to see. I'm not as intentional as people think I am. And that's not to, for me to say like I, I'm not being intentional, but like I don't go into the studio like, okay, I'm finna make a record for this, or I'm finna try to do it like this. It just re I just respond to whatever's at the top of my heart. And I be in these streets working with the youngins, you know what I'm saying? I got homies that's losing their life over a whole bunch of wild stuff. And so that comes out sometimes, you know? Um, but what I do, want people to appreciate is the variety in my music is the fact that yeah i'm gonna talk about what's going on in the streets but i'm also going to talk about myself you know i want to be a somebody that talks about their emotions that's not afraid to be vulnerable but then also still kick it in a flow that you're going to catch it and want to play it and the beat selection is going to go crazy it's going to be all over the place it's going to be experimental um, and so for me i'm always trying to 
break my box. There's no box for real. Um, and I think that's why it's hard for people to compare me to an MC. They can't really because I feel like I've been able to kind of intersect a lot of vibes that we don't see intersected very often. Well, you're you're a, a, a artist, a rapper that I hear uh, is loved by the young folks because you're in community with them, but the elders too. I mean, I'm elders rock you, with me. They, yeah, yeah no, they you, do. They, they're like, man, we watched him grow up, and did it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I love hearing that perspective out there in community because they've seen your level of dedication and love, really, uh, for community, which it is. It does come out because it's within you. It's not on you, right? Um, but but tonight, you're going to be performing at, at Juneteenth. This is a phenomenal opportunity, not only because we all get to experience you, but, yo, you're sharing the stage with Kevin Ross and Talib Kweli. I just want to hear uh, mm -hmm. from you about this moment tonight and some of the work that you're going to be bringing out to, to, to the whole audience for them to hear. Tell us more about the curation of those tracks mm -hmm. and how important this moment is for you. Yeah, so I got a, a bunch of new music I'm going to do, uh, a bunch of unreleased stuff that's fun in the crowd. Uh, I'm going to bring back a song, which, which now is three years old. Um, and actually, what's most exciting for me about this um, is I'm going to have the chance to rock with young Sky Dior. And if you haven't heard of Sky Dior, y'all go look her up. Um, actually, I met her in 2020 at Juneteenth, um, and I got to go right before her. And we just clicked, you know. Um, shout out to her mom, um, who is a big supporter as well. And so we got a song. I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and then also big up in my little brother, Elijah. You know what I'm saying? He would have been here with us. He was one of my biggest supporters. Um, and the last time I saw him, um, I was performing. And so I'm going to do some of the songs um, that I did the last time I saw him as well. Um, and that's more for my heart and, and for the folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm excited, uh, and you're so right. I mean, Elijah was a main organizer of Juneteenth, and so, you know, losing him uh, in April just shook us all in community, and I'm, I'm grateful uh, because we've been able to collectively grieve, right, and and, and um, it really elevate uh, his impact in community as a collective, and I appreciate being in that family with you as well. It, although sometimes tragedy bonds you more, you just realize, I think, how precious life really is and the importance of us continuing the work because Elijah was so dedicated. And, you know, I, I'm grateful that we'll have time on the stage uh, tonight to really uplift him, to share with so many others uh, the importance of his contributions. Um, and so thank you for having that level of foresight to say I need to you know bring some of him out in my performance as well well I'm telling you I'm, I'm you already super know. stoked mm -hmm. of course you got to look right there let folks know how they find you this camera closest to me uh if they're trying to find your music let them know right there how they find you real be free r-e-l-l-b-e-f-r-e-e -E -E, everything dot a-r-t at instagram twitter myspace facebook global fund Everywhere. Yeah. I love, All of that. I love it. I can't wait to Rainier see Rainier Avenue, yeah. South Seattle. <laughs> Y'all know where I be at. Real. I'm excited to see you tonight, and I can't wait for that collab with you and Sky. It's going to be lit. It's going to be fun. Y'all better be there. Thank you for mm -hmm. being here and making time for me today on The Day with Trey. Thank you, Trey. Absolutely. Wow. Y'all, I'm.